Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Welch, and this is the last of four brief presentations intended to communicate the trade-offs involved in cancer screening. In this video, I'll talk again about overdiagnosis, but here I'll focus on using a long-term follow-up of a randomized trial of screening to make inferences about the problem. Now, I should give you a warning. This could get technical. There'll be some math here, a little bit of subtraction but no integrals or derivatives, so you'll be fine. First, let me remind you what overdiagnosis is. It's the detection of a cancer that is not destined to ever cause symptoms or death. I suggested you th think of it as cancers that don't matter. And I talked to you a little bit about the birds, rabbits, and the turtles, different forms of cancer, and the idea was to catch them early by building fences. But you're not going to catch the birds they're already gone. They're the fastest growing cancers, the most aggressive cancers, the ones that are typically missed by screening. The rabbits can be bad cancers and you can catch them if you build enough fences. These are the cancers that would be helped by screening. And then there are the turtles. The turtles aren't going anywhere anyway. You don't need any fences. Overdiagnosis is finding the turtles. And the uncomfortable reality is there are a lot of turtles out there to find. At least a third of adults harbor small thyroid cancers. About a third of women age 40 to 49 harbor small breast cancers. And over half of men over age 60 harbor small prostate cancers. The large reservoir of early cancer is what makes overdiagnosis possible. This is a black hole, and as I said, overdiagnosis is a little bit like a black hole. We never directly observe it, and still, instead we infer its presence from what's going on around it. And in the last video, I, I, I talked about where overdiagnosis is most obvious, prostate cancer screening. It's the poster child for the problem of overdiagnosis. And I also talked about looking at incidence and mortality trends over time, looking for places where incidence is rising dramatically while mortality is stable, which provides pretty compelling evidence that overdiagnosis is a problem for thyroid cancer, melanoma, and kidney cancer. In this video, I want to talk about where overdiagnosis is most carefully measured. That's a long-term follow-up of a randomized trial of screening. And we'll talk about lung and breast cancer. But first, let's consider a generic randomized trial of cancer screening. The basic design is this. Patients are recruited. There's some age criteria about who's in the study. And the patients must be asymptomatic. By that, I mean there are no symptoms or signs of the target cancer, the cancer being screened for. Patients are randomized into typically one of two groups, a screening group and a no screening group, and then are followed forward during a study period, maybe five, ten years, during which one group is screened and the other is not. And let's say at the end of this screening period, there are 150 cancers in the screening group and 100 cancers in the no screening group. Well, that's 50 extra cancers. That almost looks like randomization failed, right? This should be ultimately the same number of cancers in each group if it's a randomized trial. That can't be right, right? No, this is expected. The extra cancers in the screening group may simply be the result of early detection. To understand why, it helps to have the long-term follow-up uh, vision. And consider now following these groups for another period of time, 5, 10, 15 years, during which both groups receive the same care. Now the question is, at the end of the study and follow-up period, how many cancers are there? Well, let's say there are 300 cancers in each group. Well, there does. that looks like a randomized trial. There's the same amount of cancer in each group. The control group has now caught up with 50 cancers. So the question is, why were there 50 extra cancers at the end of the study? And the reason is because there are cancers that are coming in the control group, but they haven't quite come by the end of the study. But in the study group, the screening group, they've been advanced in time. In this case, 50 cancers have been advanced in time. 
More must be found at this step for screening to work because it needs to be advancing some, some cancers that are destined to appear in the control group, move them forward in time in the screening group. There's no overdiagnosis here though, because ultimately there's the same number of cancers in each group. So what would overdiagnosis look like? Well, you'd have the follow-up period during which both groups receive the same care. And then at the end of the follow-up period, the total number of cancers might look like this, 300 versus 250. There's no catch-up in the control group. You don't see any evidence of cancers being advanced in time. These 50 extra cancers were overdiagnosed. Now, typically, things are somewhere more blurry in between. You have both things going on. You have a follow-up, both groups receive similar uh, care, and then at the end of the follow-up period you have say 300 cancers in the screen group, 280 cancers in the control group. Now you have 30 cancers that have caught up in the control group, but 20 that do not. So you've got the cancers out here being advanced in time, 30 cancers advanced in time, but you have 20 extra cancers found at this step that were overdiagnosed. Let's go through the calculation mechanics. It's simple math, but you want to be clear about the inference at each step. Let's start at the end game, after the follow-up period. 300 minus 280, that's 20. That excess represents overdiagnosis. 150 minus 100, that's 50. That excess represents cancers advanced in time and or overdiagnosis. The only way to sort out how many it was in which group is to do the long-term follow-up. The difference between 50 and 20 is 30, and that excess represents the cancers advanced in time. And that language refers to the screen group, and it would also be known as catch-up cancers in the control group. All right, let's look at a real trial. This is the Mayo Lung Project, which recruited patients. They were men, they were heavy smokers, and they had adequate pulmonary function for a lobectomy. They could withstand the cancer treatment. They're being randomized into one of two groups, chest x-ray every four months. That's a pretty intensive screening intervention versus usual care. The study period is six years long, after which 143 lung cancers were diagnosed in the group getting chest x-rays every four months. In the usual care group, there were 87 lung cancers. That's a total of 56 extra cancers. But remember, those, that excess represents either cancers advanced in time, or overdiagnosis, or some combination of both. To figure out what's what, we need a long-term follow-up. Well, there was a long-term follow-up. Five-year follow-up period during which both groups receive usual care. At the end of 11 years, the total number of cancers was 206 in the screening group versus 160 in the no screening group. That's 46 extra cancers. And for those that might say, wow, five years, that's not a long enough follow-up period, I should add that this study's been followed up 20 years, and those 46 extra cancers remain. So what have we got going on? Well, we've got a little bit of advancing in time. It looks like about 10 cancers were advanced in time. Another way to say that is there are 10 catch-up cancers but we've got 46 cancers overdiagnosed. So let's do this again. 56 extra cancers at this step. That's not enough to say overdiagnosis because more must be found for screening to work. It's really at the end where all of a sudden you still have 46 extra cancers because if there's no overdiagnosis, this group should catch up. And as I said, it never has, despite another 20 years of follow-up. So, let's do the final accounting. At the end of the trial, in the screening group, there were 143 cancers. In the control group, there were 87 cancers. 
Because of long-term follow-up, we know there were now 10 extra catch-up cancers for a total of 97, but that leaves us with 46 extra cancers. Where did they come from? They came from screening. So we need to know to answer the question, the most clinically re relevant question is what proportion of lung cancers detected by chest x-ray screening represent overdiagnosis? To know that, you need to know how many cancers in the screening group were screen detected, and that number is 90. The remaining were detected clinically because of signs and symptoms. So 46 over 90 means that roughly half of the screen detected cancers represented overdiagnosis. I want to be clear about the rationale for the denominator of 90 because there's often some confusion about this point. The first question you might ask is why include cancers detected during the study period but not the follow-up period? And the reason is any inference about overdiagnosis really only applies to the period when the two groups have different exposures. That's the study period where one group's being screened and the other is not. The second question is why include only screen detected cancers in the denominator? And the reason for that is by definition overdiagnosis cannot occur among the clinically detected fraction, only in the fraction detected prior to symptoms. All right, one more trial. Here's the Malmo screening mammography trial. Patients were recruited. They were, of course, women, and they were living in Malmo, Sweden. They were age 45 to 69, and they were asymptomatic. They randomized into one of two groups, screening mammography versus no mammography. They're followed forward in time for 10 years, when, during which one group's getting regular mammograms, the other group is not. At the end of the 10-year period, there's 741 breast cancers in the screen group and 591 in the control group. That's an excess of 150 extra cancers. Again, that's expected. The extra cancers may simply be the result of early detection. And the question is, what's going to happen in the future? We know more must be found for screening to work. Are there cancers out here that are going to be advanced in time? That is the lead time, and lead time's a good thing. That's what screening is trying to provide. So what are the data? Well, they were followed for an additional 15 years, during which both groups received mammography equally. The total number of cancers at 25 years was 1,320 breast cancers in the screen group, 1,205 in the control group. That's 115 extra cancers. So we have a mixture of effects again. We've got 150 extra cancers here. So there were some that were advanced in time. How many? 35 cancers advanced in time, or another way to say the same thing, 35 catch-up cancers but that leaves 115 overdiagnosed. Here's the final accounting. 741 cancers at the end of the trial in the mammography group, 591 in the control group. There's some catch-up cancers, 35 of them. That leaves an excess of 115 overdiagnosed cancers. Where did they come from? They came from the screen detected fraction, not those that are found clinically. So 115 over 475, or 24% of screen-detected cancers represent overdiagnosis in this trial. By the way, just this year, long-term follow-up of the Canadian trial of screening mammography found that 22% of screen-detected invasive cancers represent overdiagnosis. Obviously, if you include DCIS, which was rarely found in Malmo, not included in Canada, the number gets higher. It's somewhere between a third and a half. So here's what you should know. First, the most reliable measure of the frequency of overdiagnosis comes from a long-term follow-up of a randomized trial of cancer screening. Second, the excess of cancers in the screening group following long-term follow-up 
is the estimate of the number of overdiagnosed cancers. And finally, because overdiagnosis is attributable to screening, the most appropriate denominator for overdiagnosis is the number of screen detected cancers found during the trial study period. I know that's a lot. Overdiagnosis is a complex concept. But I hope this helps. Thanks.